You know, the most important thing in teaching online is planning your online class. This particular program is going to be just about that topic. My friends in Australia, in the University of Wollongong, have been doing studies for years now about what roles you have as an online instructor. And planning becomes a huge component of teaching online. Planning on the front end of what you want to accomplish in your class. And that makes a lot of sense. Once you have those plans down, things tend to run more smoothly in a, in a class, especially an online one. And so the roles of the instructor do shift a bit. We're going to talk about that coming here from Indiana University uh, in the Instructional Consulting Offices and Instructional Systems Technology. My name is Kurt Bonk, your host for these sessions. The first thing you're going to be doing in an online class is think about the pedagogical differences between a face-to-face -face course and an online one. You know, in an online course, you can do more discussion, more guidance, more web quests into some of the resources you find online and guiding students in. Instead of directly teaching, you're guiding or facilitating learning, you see? Not only that, your, your students are a bit different. You know, there are operational things that you need to keep in mind because you're going to have full-time working students. When are you going to have those synchronous sessions? How are you going to structure your groups? What kinds of things you're going to expect from your students to do and engage in tasks. Tasks might be more real world and relevant to their own job settings. You know, when you have a face-to-face -face class and move it into the web, it's not just shoveling that content, shovelware, onto the web, but thinking thoughtfully on how to integrate it in and what aspects of the web and web technologies could you take advantage of that enhance that class and that content, and then visualizing what you want to do, have a visual plan of where you want to be within that class, what you're going to accomplish, and then how you're going to test that content, find that content, and so forth. So first, brainstorm a bit. Sit in a closet. Just think and reflect on what you want to accomplish in your class. Think about the creativity or critical thinking tasks. Write them down. Don't think about your current face-to-face uh, -face class. Think about anything else for a minute. Brainstorm what if you were doing things differently and once you've got a list of possibilities then you can take that list and start developing some contents. Create some podcasts or some activities or some discussion forums. Think about what might be possible with your respective groups. Now it's not just using existing content or things that you come up with but it's also things that other people have designed. You might find things in places like Merlot which has over 20,000 free contents. It's a referatory or set of links. Not Merlot the wine, but Merlot the web resource. There's, you know, over 70,000 people using Merlot, indexing it, rating it. It's a peer rated site. If people ask you what's good quality stuff online, how about you take a look at a peer index site in higher education like Merlot? Or maybe take a look at Connections from Rice University, which is a repository of stuff. It has ebooks and animations and uh, PowerPoint slides and simulations you can actually download and use. It's also open educational resources OER, in the OER Commons. You know, MIT led the way for all sorts of rich information and contents on the web. But many others, thousands of other places around the world, are putting content on the web for you to use. Why not take advantage of it? Go to OER Commons. It's probably one of the most interesting things that have happened in the past two decades. Take a look at the National Repository of Online Courses and a lot of the free contents you might find there. Or the MIT Open Courseware Initiative or what's called OCW. Find audio files, lectures from instructors. You might find, you see, it's syllabi or tests that you might repurpose and reuse. So you create your content, organize, sequence it, and find ways of presenting that content to your students. Before you present, have a couple of students, maybe your prior students, potential students, test it out. Do some usability testing of that content. Maybe read a little bit from you know, places like the University of Idaho Outreach or the University of Wisconsin Outreach. See what they recommend. Read from the people in other countries like uh, Terry Anderson at the Vasca University in Canada who has a free book on the theory and practice of online learning. Terry tells me hundreds of thousands of people around the world have downloaded his free ebook. You know, there are challenges to teaching online. 
you can't be fashionably late like you might be in a face-to-face -face class. You know, the students won't, won't allow that. You have to be up front and center or students won't know what to do. You know, walking into a room like they do face-to-face. -face. You can't be just writing grants and expecting them to be funded and then someone covering your class at the last minute because you got a grant funded. I've seen that happen. It doesn't work. You can't just sl uh, put someone into a class at the last minute online. And if you have trepidations about technology, get some training. Be ready for this new type of teaching online. Be more of a guide and facilitator. Be one who matches students up for collaboration. You know, be someone who models what to do in an online discussion forum. Know the strengths and weaknesses of online. There's a permanency to the text, so reuse that text. There are a plethora of resources you can embed in options, case A and case B, you know, a visual and an audio file. But if you've got all these options, allow time for development. Don't expect you to be able to create a class in two minutes or three minutes or three days, three weeks. Maybe it's going to take three months, six months. But develop in such a way that changes can be made in that class. So when you find new stuff, you can embed them in. Use consistent and in innovation where possible. So have a consistent layout, but embed new kinds of things so there's some variety as well. So students aren't bored and sleeping within your class, you see, but yet they understand what your, your goals are and your objectives are each week. Simple yet elegant. Not the Taj Mahal, but create the most sophisticated simulation in your first class that you might be teaching, okay? Um, there might be things that you try out that don't work the first time around. Maybe it will the second or third time. Don't give up on these things that might be innovative, but keep in mind you know, you just want to have a functional class to start with, and then you can build on it. Know your students, know your objectives, know yourself. Are your students ready? Are you ready? There are, in fact, student readiness checklists, you know. You have these students, right, within your class, potentially online. Are they the type that are good time managers? Are they comfortable with email? Are they self-motivated and don't procrastinate? There are student readiness checklists. Their instructor front end analysis checklists of whether they're ready to teach in an online class. So, the things you need to do in planning your class to understand your audience, to understand your objectives, to understand yourself and whether you're ready. And when all those things happen, even then you might need some technical support within your class. You might need some additional side help to get that class up and running in case there are problems. Here at Indiana, we have wonderful instructional consulting offices to help faculty, every university, potentially every organization, institution, corporation, and K-12 school has some tech support available somewhere, whether it's internally or externally online. You might have a teaching and learning technology center. Whatever it is, make sure that you take full advantage of it so that you're using the resources that exist to plan an online class so it's not just reliant on you to do something, but in fact, you have that support, you take advantage of it where possible, and you know what it is that will uh, succeed within your class because you've laid out your plan, you've got your timeline, you've got your objectives, you've got your goals that you've embedded within that classroom structure. When you've done your front end audience analysis, when you've gotten your student readiness checklists, when you've re researched the content that's out there and looked at Merlot and the open ed resources and all the other resources that are available to you, and you've mapped them out in some kind of structure for you, you're going to have more chances to succeed and wear that planning hat where possible so that you in turn can succeed and be the best instructor that you possibly can be. This is Kurt Bonk. I wish you well in this online class that you're going to be teaching soon or maybe have taught and are rethinking. Good luck in planning a course online. It's the most important thing you can do, and maybe it will transfer, in fact, to your face-to-face -face and blended classes. Good luck.